today, um, Suzanne Palmer. She actually couldn't be here in person, um, but she's actually um, going to be, I think, live on, on, on a, a Zoom. Is that correct? And um, she actually gave a talk about this topic several years ago at the um, July meeting, and she's an excellent speaker on the topic. She used to be the um, chief of abdominal imaging at, at USC before she moved to the Long Beach VA. So she should appear soon. I'm here. I just need to have my slides. Thank you, Dr. Khan, for the invitation to speak. I really appreciate it. And I really apologize for not being there with you in person. But yesterday, I had an accident and ended up hurting my back and hip and just can't sit. I did try and make it in the car, but that didn't work. I have to really thank Megan Fowler and Jack Byers for helping me change an in-person meeting to a remote really very quickly. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about imaging evaluation of liver masses. And I have nothing to disclose. And this talk is going to be in a case-based, uh, and it's going to be a case-based approach to go over appearance differential and workup of hepatic masses. And before I start, I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Dr. Derdulian, Grant, Molly, and Hossein. Uh, they, they volunteered some images, especially the contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Okay, we're going to start with a 31-year-old female with liver mass found incidentally during third, her third trimester of pregnancy. And unfortunately, I don't have a pointer to go with this, so I'll have to be even more descriptive. This is an image of a left upper quadrant ultrasound. It's the inferior aspect of the liver, and there is an exophytic mass that is somewhat heterogeneous, but relatively similar architecture to the liver. You can see what those the red and the blue dots in the middle of it, that this does have blood flow. So we've got you know, a relatively healthy pregnant woman who just happened to have a right upper quadrant ultrasound with a mass. Now, pretty much all of your resident, I mean, all of your radiologists are going to look at this image and have a differential or at least categories. We always look at our images with categories in mind. They tend to be, similar because neoplasm, infection, are the number one and two or two and one of any differential. But we always think about infection, I'm sorry, congenital and traumatic as well. So in this woman, you, know, you can see on ultrasound, the lesion is solid, not cystic. Um, she is otherwise healthy and in her third trimester. So it is decided to wait until, until she delivered to get the next study. And the next study is an MRI. And on this, you can see the mass is posterior to the left lobe of the liver, exophytic. And its periphery is similar in signal intensity on both T1 and T2 to the liver. The central is a little more heterogeneous. This is nonspecific. And it really doesn't change the differential or what this could be with regard to neoplasm. It certainly doesn't look like infection and it's not congenital. Now, of course, the patient did get gadolinium and she got the routine blood pool agent, which demonstrates on the left, the arterial phase, hyperenhancement, portal venous phase, the periphery becomes more iso uh, to the liver. Central area is a little more increased in signal intensity or enhancement, both on portal venous and equilibrium phases. So what does that do for a differential? I'm going to say she's 34, formerly pregnant, no history of liver disease or primary malignancy. So we're really thinking about benign entities. They said that cyst isn't likely given the appearance, and hemangiomas tend to be very bright on T2 signal intensity. So what we're really left with are focal nodular hyperplasia and adenoma. If we didn't have to worry about you know, bleeding or you know, this patient getting pregnant again or being on contraceptives, we could stop right here because both are benign. But because most of us want to know what this is, the patient underwent another study. Let's see. 
there we go. And this was performed, another MRI performed with hepatobiliary contrast agent in the United States that would be Eovist or Primavist. And on the arterial phase, you see that there is hyper enhancement, portal venous phase, you can see that it's still brighter than the liver. And then on the hepatobiliary phase, you see that there is uptake of the contrast by this mass. And this makes it diagnostic for, let's see, focal nodular hyperplasia. Now, in contradistinction to adenoma, you've got focal nodular hyperplasia has uptake, whereas on the right, you can see that dark hole in the right lobe of the liver is an adenoma. Now, uptake is due to OATP, mediated intrahepatic, intrahepatocellular uptake. That's why the liver is very bright. That's why FNHs are bright. Adenomas do not have any or as much of this, so they do not have as much uptake. But I also want you to look at these other images or these images for the other organs. I want to look at the bile ducts. Um, if you, on the right, there's just that dot in the head of the pancreatic head that's bright. That's going to be the common bile duct. In the, that was the left image, sorry. On the right image, you can see there's a larger blob of brightness. That's going to be a portion of the gallbladder. And then that more um, uh, elliptoid is the common duct. Now also look at the blood vessels. The blood vessels are not enhancing because the contrast has cleared from the blood pool. Remember the hepatobiliary phase, at least when we get it on MRI, is at approximately 20 minutes post-injection. Here's another woman with the same, same issue, but this is CT. And you can see that there's increased enhancement on arterial phase. And then on the portal venous phase, it's sim similar to intensity or excuse me, density as the liver. So we still have the same differential FNH versus adenoma. However, in this case, could she, this, she already had, had CT, MR wasn't available. So the patient underwent contrast enhanced ultrasound. And as you can see, there is this, this is just early arterial phase, and it is brightly enhancing, and then becomes hypo-intense, or at least, excuse me, iso to the remainder of the liver. If you look at the image on the right, it, this has a stellate appearance. This is within the first fraction of the second of the contrast injection. This stellate appearance with centripetal filling is diagnostic for focal nodular hyperplasia. And just because we like to get everything, patient also had an MRI, which shows the lesion just anterior to the portal vein in the medial segment of the left hepatic lobe. It has uptake of the of eovist, and therefore that confirms that this is focal nodular hyperplasia. <laughs> Just a little bit on contrast enhanced ultrasound, just as a, a review for some. Contrast enhanced ultrasound consists of microscopic bubbles of gas in an encapsulated lipid or protein shell. These are blood pool agents, or at least the, the ones that are currently FDA approved now are blood pool agents, and they stay in the intravascular space. Part of this is because they are the same or similar size to RBCs, which allows them to avoid filtration in the heart and lungs and avoids leakage, leakage into the interstitium. The gas is expelled through the lungs. And to date, there's no evidence of nephrotoxicity risk, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. And because this is done under ultrasound, there's no ionizing radiation. There are now hepatobiliary agents that will excrete through the biliary system, but they're not used very commonly and they're not FDA approved yet. Now, the nice thing about contrast enhanced ultrasound is that imaging is real time. It's not the static points of CT MRI, you know, arterial, portal venous, and equilibrium phase. You're watching it enhance and wash out or doing whatever it's going to do as it happens. So these are the common uses in the abdomen, liver tumors, portal vein um, occlusion, and also renal evaluation of the renal masses is another big category, but 
essentially, we use this all over the body. <clears throat> okay, case number two. We've got a 52 year old male with rate of quadrant pain and an indeterminate mass bound on ultrasound. So the patient underwent a multi-phase CT and on the left pre-contrast, you can see that there is a lesion that is hypodense to liver on non-con. There is some nodular enhancement on arterial phase. And then as we go to portal venous and equilibrium or delayed phase, it does look like that little area that was hyper enhancing is washing out. So obviously we're all thinking HCC. And then the thing is that that nails it is the fact that the patient has a right pleural effusion. If you look on the equilibrium image on the right, in the gastrohepatic ligament, there are those enhancing tubular structures. Those are the patient's collaterals. And although the liver surface is not really nodular, there is a little cleft in the along the right lobe with a little bit of ascites there. So this patient has findings of chronic liver disease on imaging and a mass that demonstrates arterial enhancement and washout. So let's go back to our, our differential of liver lesions. And this is a great thing. Liver lesions, this is, I mean, although there can be other things found in the liver, this is going to capture most of, most of them. So given this history, you know, malignancy is going to be on the top of the list. And again, given his history of chronic liver disease, HCC, pretty straightforward. You, you deal with this every single day. Now, of course, some patients get lost to follow up, such as this patient. And you can see that the, the mass that was previously between one and two centimeters now is up, has grown to over four centimeters, and there's more evidence of decompensated liver disease. I forgot to add or mention that, you know, given the fact that that one that prior lesion was between one and two centimeters, had arterial enhancement and washout, that would be a LIRADS-5. Um, this still remains a LIRADS-5, but it definitely has grown significantly. So next step for this patient was transarterial chemoembolization. And you can see with the arrow that there is a significant nodular component that is persistently showing arterial enhancement and washout. So this would be a, an incompletely treated HCC or LIRADS TR for treated, V for viable. So LIRADS TR viable. Now we go, now the thing about the post-treatment patients you're lucky if you get a CT like this where you don't, where the pre-contrast really isn't that heterogeneous. But in a lot of cases, the pre-contrast shows high attenuation from the lapiodal or hemorrhage or a lot of other things that may confound the evaluation for arterial enhancement and or washout. So there are some tricks, not tricks. There are certain things that you can do or focus on when you have somebody who's post local regional therapy. And for MRI, one, one thing that can be done is use subtraction. This case, there is a treated lesion in the right lobe near the IBC. So it, that's bright. It's got intrinsic T1 increased signal intensity. Thing about it is, is that that increased signal intensity will travel through, will be seen or reflected on all phases. So the shine, what we call shine through which makes it a little more difficult to determine whether there indeed is enhancement in the arterial phase. I would look at this and say, yeah, I think there is um, enhancement, especially from the nine to 12 o'clock position because that didn't, that didn't seem quite as bright on the pre-contrast. Um, and then we go to the, to the washout and, or the equilibrium phase. And is that uh, tissue or nodularity from the 12 to five o'clock position shine through or is it washout? So for MR, we always do, or subtraction should always be done. And this is not a separate sequence. This is subtracting the pre-contrast from the post-contrast 
leaving you just with what enhances. So in this case, you can see that same lesion has nodular you know, areas of enhanced peripheral enhancement from the seven o'clock position to the five o'clock position. So that confirms that this is viable. So TR, um, Lyra has TR viable. Other things with MR that, that are helpful or might be helpful. Um, another thing is diffusion weighted imaging. Not infrequently do we have images like on, or patients like on the left. This is arterial phase. <clears throat> and it shows that there are two bright lesions up in the dome. One's a little larger, lateral one, one's a little smaller medially. But on all other phases, it's ISO intense to the remainder of the liver. And on pre-contrast T1 and T2, you really don't see them. So you can use diffusion weighted imaging. It's not, it, it's, it's not a perfect tool. However, if you see increased signal intensity, <clears throat> excuse me, um, like on the right image, again, this is where a pointer might help a little bit, but the larger, the larger lesion shows um, increased signal. That's diffusion restriction. And that corresponds to this being a poorly differentiated HCC. <clears throat> now, dysplastic nodules don't typically have diffusion restriction. The one confounding feature is that early and well differentiated HCC may not have increased diffusion restriction and may be indistinguishable from adjacent liver. So for diffusion, if there is diffusion restriction, that helps you and it supports a, a diagnosis of a HCC. If you don't have diffusion restriction, it doesn't exclude HCC. The other thing that we can use, oh, wait, here's another one for diffusion. So you can see on the left, on T2 weighted sequence, there's a large lesion in the caudate lobe extending into the, the central liver. Nobody's going to miss that. I mean, and this is on T2. You know, this is going to have our arterial enhancement and wash out. It's going to be HCC, boom, end of story. But if you look at the right side, just as an example of what a very, you know, bright or restricting lesion looks like, it's that, that area that's bright. But also focus on the caudate lobe. There is tumor that extends further toward the spine um, on the T2, and it's there on diffusion weighted imaging, but it certainly is not, the, the diffusion restriction is not as great as the larger portion of the liver. So likely that represents a more well differentiated or well differentiated or an earlier component. But what's interesting is that there are two little dots posteriorly in segment six. Those going back to T2, you don't even see them. And those are, those are areas of HCC. So in certain cases, you might see more with the diffusion weighted imaging than on the other series. You can also use hepatobiliary agents, including Eovist or Primavist. And in this case, and it's the same case, you can see that the area that showed diffusion restriction, the area that was increased in T2 signal intensity, shows absent uptake of, of the contrast agent. And so do those two little dots in segment six. Think about Eovist and Primavist, the hepatobiliary agents, they are nonspecific. If a lesion has uptake, like the liver, it can be both benign and malignant. Mm -hmm. Remember the focal nodular hyperplasia that I showed earlier, dysplastic nodules. But unfortunately, up to 12% of HCCs uh, won't have or will have either this uptake. If the lesion doesn't have uptake, like in this case, it's you know, the differential still is both contains both benign and malignant entities. Again, in a patient with chronic liver disease, this is going to be HCC. Um, but hemangiomas, some dysplastic nodules, and confluent fibrosis can also have absent uptake. So again, it's nonspecific. It's not. It's nonspecific. Okay. So contrast 
Arizona. Can somebody click on this where it says inject one on the image? Oh no. Okay. Well, this one's not going to work. Hopefully, my other will work. The others did work, so it's, it's lucky that at least we've got some of the contrast enhanced ultrasounds working. Anyway, contrast enhanced ultrasound, you know, we're looking at the, for the same thing arterial enhancement and washout. Um, enhancement actually seems a little earlier uh, when you're watching contrast enhanced ultrasound, sometimes just looks immediate, but it's typically between 10 and 40 seconds after injection of the contrast, obviously due to neovascularity and angiogenesis from the tumor. Well-differentiated HCCs tend to show later washout or no washout, which sort of goes along with the what I was talking about with the diffusion and EOVIST um, findings. It can look more normal or less typical for HCC. However, poorly differentiated HCC tends to show more rapid washout and peripheral and rim enhancement is not commonly seen. Here are, here are some static images showing from right top to left lower arterial enhancement, bright arterial enhancement, then the lesion becomes more difficult to see in the left lower corner because it's, it's iso to the remainder of the liver. And on delay, it is subtle, or it may look a little subtle, but it is washing out. Now, when do we use contrast enhanced ultrasound? Well, not everybody does it, so um, that's, one, that's one factor. But if you're in a center that does contrast enhanced ultrasound, really it can be used for almost anything, but it's typically when a, con a contrast study is needed and for whatever reason, CT and MRI are contraindicated or unavailable. So typically follow up um, incidental findings on found on routine ultrasound, inconclusive findings on MRI CT. Uh, sometimes if the patient has a known history of malignancy, and there's just something funny going on somewhere in the, on any other study, which I guess would be inconclusive MR and CT findings. Um, but also, we may use it for a guiding ultrasound guided biopsy, because sometimes these lesions can be very deep and very small and not amenable to CT guided biopsy. Ultrasound is, is a great way to biopsy liver lesions just because of its real time imaging, but sometimes these lesions are really hard to see. In those cases, you can give the contrast to you know, allow something to pop out as it does on this particular case, and it can be helpful. The other is evaluation post-local regional therapy. And here's a case where there was a lesion um, brightly enhancing posteriorly with the area, and, and uh, contrast-enhanced ultrasound was used to evaluate treatment response. And so the right image shows a big gaping dark hole that indicates the devascularized area and indicates successful treatment. So here's a 62 year old female with HCC. She's had two episodes of taste and on the CT on the right, you can see there are areas of increased density, which is the lapidol, and then there's some areas that are more intermediate in, in density. She got a contrast enhanced ultrasound just to see exactly how much tumor is, a viable tumor might be there. And so on the image on the left, you can see that there is this enhancing nodule within an anechoic cavity. This is an incompletely treated HCC. So that's the LIRADS TR for treated and viable, um, yes, viable. She underwent a third episode of TACE and this is what she looked like afterwards. And there is that little nodule posteriorly. It's hard really to tell. It was hard to tell whether that was a real finding or just some normal liver going, protruding into that area. In this case, it, this would be more equivocal. This would be LIRADS TR equivocal because there, there is something that we definitely need to follow up on. Will it require immediate uh, retasting? No, probably not. This is something that's definitely a follow-up. 
Okay, the other thing you can use contrast for, especially in the HCC patients, are determining whether a thrombus is bland or whether it's tumor invasion. So on this video clip, you can see that the left, or at least the anterior segment of the right portal vein demonstrates enhancement during contrast administration. There is a smaller artery within the portal vein, which is neovascularity. The larger artery, uh, hepatic artery, is to the left of the portal vein. If you look at the more horizontal area, with, you can see some moving bubbles right there. That's going to be the open portal vein. So in this case, we confirmed that there is tumor invasion into the portal vein. And here's a comparison. Um, this is portal vein, and you, with, during contrast, you see the enhancement of the arteries, but you don't see any contrast in the portal vein. There should be contrast in the portal vein if it's patent. There should be enhancement if it's tumor thrombus or tumor invasion. In this case, that's bland thrombus. Okay, case number three. We have a 58 year old female with new diagnosis of colon cancer, and stage CT found an indeterminate lesion. It was hypo enhancing. And so, because of the history, the patient went to, to MRI. Here we have a lesion, the arrow, that is relatively bright, pretty bright. Um, on T2 weighted imaging, it's well circumscribed, lobulated, decreased in signal intensity on T1 weighted imaging. Now, just based on these, the, this appearance, um, you know, infection, congenital, traumatic, they're off the table. So we've got benign and malignant. Of the benign and malignant um, things, it, this is not going to be FNH or adenoma. We saw those early on and they were not as bright as this. Things that are bright on T2 in the liver are hemangiomas, cysts, and rarely metastases like neuroendocrine or mucinous. They tend not to be this bright, but let's face it, patient has a history of colon cancer, METs are not off the table. So patient, well, there we go. So patient has a contrast portion of the MR. And what this shows is not a whole lot going on on the arterial phase. Portal venous phase, the one in the middle, has a little bit of nodularity in the periphery. And then on delayed phase, that nodularity coalesces and becomes more apparent. This is diagnostic of hemangioma. This is not going to be a MET, so we don't have to worry about this lesion. Uh, now, I've got some other examples of hemangiomas. So here we have a small one, a, a patient or a, an MR arterial phase and portal venous phase. The area, the arrow is showing a very small hyperenhancing lesion centrally. If you look back to the arterial phase to the left, there you see a little blush of um, enhancement. The right side case this is a little more classic where on arterial phase, you see a few little nodules of enhancement, a few more peripheral nodules in portal venous. And then on the equilibrium phase, the one that's all the way to the left, excuse me, all the way to the right, there's almost complete enhancement of the mass. Now, the one other thing that is helpful for hemangiomas is that the enhancing component should follow blood pool. So if you again, look at the, the last image on the left. The mass is similar in signal intensity to the adjacent portal veins, IDC, and the aorta. And if you look at all the others, it really does follow blood pool. Now, hemangiomas can be very unusual looking. They may not have a lot of um, enhancement, or they may have areas that, where there is no enhancement. But the case on the left shows, again, T2 with very bright, you know, the mass is bright, very bright in T2 signal intensity. This one has degeneration centrally. Um, the case on the right is slowly filling in, except there's that central area of degeneration, but notice, it, notice that the mass is following signal intensity of blood pool. 
And then here's a patient who's got atypical hemangioma. And we only, only call it atypical because this is was seen initially on ultrasound as a fatty liver. And when you have a fatty liver, hemangiomas, well, hemangiomas typically are well circumscribed, echo, hyper echoic with increased through transmission, almost diagnostic. When it comes to a hemangioma and liver, fatty liver, all bets are off. The lesion is low and it's, it's indeterminate. Um, the images below show the contrast enhanced ultrasound for that particular lesion. Can somebody click the, just right below, well, click the image on the right at the bottom. Okay, and this is a short clip, but on the enhancing side, you can sort of see the peripheral nodular enhancement. This is just a very brief arterial phase. So that's an angioma. Okay, and then here's another image showing how quickly some hemangiomas fill, that flash fill hemangioma. And that little tail on the bottom is a characteristic finding for hemangioma as a feeding vessel. Okay, Red case number four, 65 year old male with history of lung cancer and prostate cancer. And this mass was found on a, at his, Lung cancer was distant, prostate cancer was more recent. These lesions were seen on CT, indeterminate. So the patient ended up with MRI. And what we see are two lesions. It's harder to see the two lesions on the T2, but somewhat heterogeneous um, with central area of, of necrosis. There is no enhancement in that central area. On T1 and T2, the periphery is close. Well, at least on T2, it's very close to the signal intensity of the liver parenchyma itself. We go to the arterial phase. There's peripheral arterial enhancement on the one in the left lobe. The other is almost completely hyper enhancing. And then on delayed phase, the peripheral area seems to have a bit of washout. So with this appearance, benign lesions are unlikely. This is not a cyst, not a hemangioma because it's supposed to, hemangiomas are supposed to be very bright on T2-weighted imaging. Focal nodular hyperplasia, no. Adenoma, you know, adenoma I'll always think a little bit about because adenomas can be some of the ugliest and strangest looking lesions in the liver. But this is unlikely given his age um, and his history. So we're pretty solidly in the malignant category for this patient. Um, Infection congenital and traumatic, very unlikely. So here we are. Um, as far as what we would look at, HCC, possible, but could it be fibrolamellar perhaps, but that would be unlikely. He, looking back, no history of liver disease. Cholangiocarcinoma, doesn't really fit that bill. Sarcoma, hemangioendothelioma can look very strange. Lymphoma usually does not have necrosis like this. And then we're left with METS again. Because this, the whole, these image, these findings just really didn't, they weren't classic for anything. This patient had to go to biopsy. And these actually ended up being carcinoid METS. We were initially thinking, oh, lung cancer. Okay, it's going to be a run-of-the-mill lung cancer because that is going to be just a hypo-enhancing lesion, it may or may not have necrosis, but usually doesn't. But carcinoid, on the other hand, you know, would fit this. Carcinoids tend to be hyper-enhancing on arterial phase and can have washout, and they can be very, very large and heterogeneous with necrosis. So sometimes, many times, you have to go to biopsy to find out what is going on. Now, PET-CT. Um, this is my one slide. Actually, I have two slides on PET-CT. Uh, people always ask about PET-CT. And yes, it's good for differentiating some malignant from benign lesions. But more often, it's not for diagnosing. It's usually used for tumor staging, detection of recurrence, and monitoring response to treatment. As with everything, there are false positives and negatives. And, and you know, false positives are abscesses, and negatives are HCC. So 
In this case, on the first image to the left, that is an area of uptake within a pancreatic head mass. And then there's a large area of uptake in the right hepatic lobe. If you look at the CT below, the patient does have uh, duct dilatation where they have got the white arrows and then the areas of hypoenhancement posteriorly. This patient happens to not have liver metastases. This patient has um, obstruction and cholangitic abscesses. And so that's why this PET is positive. Now I promised to you know, show something that is coming down the pipe that's being, that might be um, helpful or it looks like it's going to be helpful for HCC and that's choline 11 versus FDG PET. Now, what studies are showing is that choline seems to be taken up or is being taken up by moderately well differentiated HCC, which is going to be the image labeled B. Same patient labeled C, FDG, doesn't show any uptake. The converse is true for poorly differentiated HCC, where the choline is not showing any uptake, but the lesion is taking up FDG. So it looks like choline 11 might be a good answer to how do we find those well-differentiated HCCs? More to follow, not in this lecture, later in life. Okay, case five. Um, actually, can somebody tell me how much time I have left just because I know we started a little after 10.10. Okay, well, I'll keep on going. And then you just tell me to stop because I think I probably have about 10, five or 10 minutes left. Okay, case number five, 81 year old male with unintentional weight loss. So now we have this complex cystic structure in the liver and our same differential. This is going to be patient underwent CT. Whereas on the ultrasound, you know, this looks like a complex cyst, but we don't know, you know, exactly what. When we have the CT, what you see is this, this lesion, it's the subtle uh, internal architecture is difficult to identify on the CT, but what you do see is this relatively thick rim of hypoenhancement. That is consistent with, most consistent with abscess. You know, although there are some tumors that can have degeneration, you wouldn't have this much degeneration um, or necrosis and that small of a rim. Cysts, again, should have an imperceptible rim, although they can have some internal septations. So this most likely is or should be infection. Patient underwent an MRCP because of, of increasing LFTs, and he was found to have multiple gallstones within the common bile duct shown on the left. And then again, this enhancing, oh, I'm good till 11, thank you. <laughs> then we got rim enhancement, or actually not rim enhancement, We've got thick rim uh, surrounding the more fluid component. This is a cholangitic abscess. I'm going to show some other cystic structures. Here's another cystic structure on ultrasound, definitely has fluid and solid components. Patient underwent contrast ultrasound which is on the right and shows that, except for that one septation, the solid components did not show any enhancement. So this is consistent with a hemorrhagic cyst. It could have some proteinaceous debris, but in most cases, this would be a hemorrhagic cyst. MRI is kind of nice for hemorrhagic cysts uh, because of the T1 and T2 weighting. CT, you look at the CT, it kind of looks like the abscess are, that was seen on the last study, um, diffusely decreased in attenuation with some areas, amorphous faint areas of higher attenuation, um, and a rim of uh, a thick rim. Go over to the MRI, however, and you see that it's predominantly fluid, bright on T2, dark on T1. But what is the most important finding is the high T1 signal intensity. So the left, excuse me, the image on the right, the, the bright areas 
that are in the periphery and in that set patient. That is characteristic of blood products, you know, specifically methemoglobin. So when you see that, it's almost always diagnostic of hepatic cyst, not 100% because as radiologists, we never are 100% or in medicine, nobody's ever 100%, but that in, in this patient would be consistent with hemorrhagic cyst. Okay. Um, here's another one, complex cysts, multiple septations. Um, we're looking at the CT, same findings. In this case, though, MR, MR is an excellent modality for evaluating cystic masses because the internal architecture is very well demonstrated. Obviously, ultrasound is very good with its high resolution for internal architecture. But here we've got T2 and T1 weighted imaging. The septae are very thin. There is no uh, abnormal signal or thick wall surrounding this. You know, could this still be an abscess? It's possible, but given, you know, going back to the patient's history, who, the patient's asymptomatic, this was just found incidentally, cystanoma is more likely. Unfortunately, there is no imaging way to absolutely diagnose cystadenoma. I mean, it's got multiple septated cysts. It's really, does it grow over time? And so these definitely would be followed. Now, just to complete, you know, cystic structures, I'm not sure how well you see these, but on the coronal image on the left, there are a lot of little punk tape bright spots. Those are going to be biliary hamartomas or small cysts. You really can't tell one from the other. Uh, but if somebody has a, a bunch of these small things, they're mm -hmm. probably going to be biliary hamartomas or von Meyenberg complexes, going to be T2 bright. And because some of them are so, so small, you may not see them unless you give contrast and they will not enhance. Okay, last case. And this is a 31 year old female with right lower quadrant pain for one year. Okay, so we've got CT going from left upper is non-con, right upper arterial, lower low a row is portal venous and equilibrium phase. So there are actually two lesions here. The largest is in the right hepatic lobe. The left is, excuse me, the smaller is in the lateral segment. These are low attenuation on pre-contrast. They kind of enhance somewhat, you know, it, on arterial, there may be some peripheral enhancement. The lateral segment one looks like there's a dot in the middle of it, not peripheral. Portal venous, things seem to enhance a little more. Uh, delayed phase, they're hyper enhancing. There's also a little retraction of the capsule. So, let's see, do I have my differential here? There's a coronal, and the coronal actually looks a little more worrisome because it has that, that rim enhancement, um, which makes me sometimes makes me think of, of infection. So, in this case, you know, these aren't cysts. You know, hemangioma, certainly not a classic hemangioma. FNH, no. Adenoma, as I said, will always stay in the differential just because anything that's weird could possibly be a hemangioma. She's in the right age range. Malignant, you know, she has no history of malignancy, but we certainly can't you know, take that out. Infection, just because of that coronal ring of enhancement, that stays in. Wouldn't be congenital or traumatic. So we've got a much larger differential that we're left with. So she went and got an MRI. Lesion is increased in T2 signal intensity, decreased in T1 signal intensity. You can see the retraction of the capsule with a little bit of fluid, much better identified on that axial T2 weighted se sequence. Does this help with the differential? Well, I'm going to say FNH probably shouldn't be in there, um, but hemangioma, adenoma, cholangiocarcinoma, um, HCC, it's not doing the washout thing. And let's see. And so when it comes to cases where you have such a, such a large differential going from benign to malignant, got a biopsy. This patient was biopsied and these were found to be hemangiomas, multiple hemangiomas. 
And I'm going back to the T2. Now, so these are brighter than you'd expect for, for a lot of tumors on T2, but not quite as bright or typical for hemangioma. Um, but like I say, sometimes you are just left with biopsy. So, oopsie, back. <laughs> so in conclusion, imaging can diagnose many liver masses without requiring biopsy, especially cysts. If you see a well-circumscribed non-enhancing fluid density, signal intensity, extrathnicity uh, structure, you can diagnose cysts. Hemangiomas, well-circumscribed, T2 bright, peripheral nodular enhancement, and centripetal filling, the classic description. Focal nodular hyperplasia, you don't see a lot on pre-contrast, but post-contrast, it will have uptake of biliary phase. And then as we know, arterial enhancement and washout for HCC. However, there may be a large overlap in imaging of parents for all these lesions. So biopsy may be needed or likely will be needed if the diagnosis will change the patient care. Thank you very much. And I think I will be back for question and answer. <laughs>